שהשר לא מזוהה מגיע מצפון. see you because I thought it would be a good idea to get better acquainted, since I hope we'll be working together closely. I'm glad to have this opportunity to congratulate you on your appointment. Mm, I hope I live up to my predecessor. I'm <laughs> certain you'll do very well. <laughs> I've been going around to various branches of the armed forces, trying to get a sense of their intelligence needs. Hold my calls, please. Can I get you something? No, thank you. At any rate, as I said... A shopping list. You'd like to know... Exactly like to know what you need. Well, if you could get me the strategic plan of the Syrian Air Force, oh. <laughs> or the exact day they plan to push us into the sea, <laughs> I'll tell you what I would like, and maybe it isn't beyond the realm of possibility. A MiG. A MiG? We need to take it apart. I would like to fly it find its weaknesses, its blind spots. There is a basic principle of warfare that to know the weapons the enemy has is already to beat them. So, you'd like a MiG? If possible. You look nice, madam. Thank you, Lila. you after the concert. We wanted to invite you to our club. Hello, David. When did you get back? A few days ago. Hello, Marcel. How are you? Nice to see you. You were in the States? Yes. Actually, I can only stay a few minutes. I'm on my way to the airport. Not okay. Have you met Mohamed Hadar? No. David and Helen Mason. How do you do? Dr. Hussain and his wife. Hello. Hello. Nice meeting you. 
Mustafa Najib. David is the local representative for General Oil of New Jersey. And what do you do? Fly planes. Really? Sure. Who wants to dance? Come on, Chantal, dance with me. Yes, why not? You have been back all the week and didn't call. Naughty creature. Now you are leaving again. Business is business. Oh. But does it keep you warm on your bed? Does it? What have you been up to? Mm, nothing. <laughs> it's quite a gathering. Yes. It is our Independence Day. Independence? From what? The king. And other restraints. Would you excuse me for a moment, please? Certainly. Take care of yourself. Airport, please. You like music? I love music. I got all the Beatles, all the latest records. I got this one. Uh, babe, bam, 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 bam. I got you, babe. Bam, bam. <laughs> you know that one? Sure, I love it. I got a lot of tension in my job, so I like to listen to music. It relaxes me. What do you do? I work at the airbase with Marcel. I'm a pilot. And your name is Helen. Helen of Troy. Are you Greek? Do I look Greek? Not at all. 100% American. Ah, I love to go to America once, just for a visit. No chance around here. With everything on war footing, military can't leave Iraq. I can go to Russia, but who wants to go to Russia? Bad enough I have to deal with these bastards here. Are you unhappy here? I have my downs and my ups. How are you, Jim? You should know, I just leave you two minutes ago. I suppose you want me to introduce you? No, we have already met. And now I may ask you to dance with me. Who's that? Will you two get off my buttocks and find your own? I'm only curious. Her name is Helen Mason. She's a friend of Chantal, American. What do you care anyway? You are married. So are you. You are dancing beautiful, like silver. Anybody ever told you this? Not exactly in those terms, no. What happened to your husband? He's on his way to London. Ah, for how long for? What's it to you? <laughs> You're funny, you American women's. Ah, so you've known many of us. I like you. Because I'm American? I find that difficult to believe. No, 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 I like Americans. I would be happy if Zionism did not control your policies, if you were not bombing Vietnam, and if you were not trying to take over with the British left off in draining the lifeblood of my country. But otherwise, you're fine. I may ask you now to walk with me on the veranda. You know, you remind me of guys I met in Paris. I remind you? Yes. How? Well, they're trying to get you into bed. They insult your politics. There is no bed on the veranda. You know, Sometimes the most beautiful relationships are formed between people who, at the beginning, hate each other. Really? Are you married? No. Not at all. <laughs> May I? Oh, he's married. Two children. Thanks for rescuing me. I didn't rescue. 
I wanted to dance with you. My name is Muni Retha. Helen Mason. You are long in Baghdad? A few months. Are you married? Yes. You are friends with Chantal? Yes. So how do you like like that? Sometimes. Yes, well. <laughs> well, you have a beautiful smile. I was in America once. I got my training there. Really? Where? El Paso. I loved it. Have you been there? Yeah, and you can keep it. You don't like El Paso? It's hot. Ah. You don't like hot. I like hot, yes, but not forever. Where I come from, it rains all the time. It's green everywhere. Sometimes the earth gets so wet, you can smell it turning inside out. The climate in Iraq is hard for me. It's dry, and the desert winds disturb me. Yes, they can be disturbing. They can make a man crazy. Only a man, not a woman. Oh, yes, of course, a woman. But you don't have to worry tonight. The desert winds aren't blowing. No. The air is nice and cool. What does your husband do here? Oil. Oh. He's American? Yes. Then he's not here tonight. He's on his way to London. He travels a lot. So what do you do with yourself when he's not here? I run a small business. Do quite a bit of traveling myself. We don't see each other that much these days. Forgive me, your husband must be a fool to leave a woman like you here alone. We have a deep and trusting relationship. I really must be going. I didn't mean to offend you. No, 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 I'm expecting a phone call. I've got to go. Can I take you home? No, thank you. I have a car. I enjoyed talking with you. Can I see you again? I don't think that would be wise to you. For lunch? No. Well, how about if I... No, Munir. Good Before I read the flight roster, Colonel Bukharin here wants to say something. This is the finest plane in the world. You are the best pilots in the Iraqi Air Force, which is why you were selected for the honor of flying the MiG. I have discussed your progress with my fellow instructors, and we are far from satisfied. We gave you 24. Only three still work. We would hate to think that you're only capable of flying carpets. <laughs> Nobody expects you to achieve the standards of Soviet pilots immediately, but you, Pilot Nidjem, I seem to have difficulty holding your attention. 
You have my attention. Hello? David! How are you? Oh, that's too bad. How long do you think it will take? I guess it's okay, but... Just get back as soon as you can, okay? I miss you. Me too. Love you, darling. Call you soon. Love you too. Take care. Bye. Continue routine surveillance. Next. Flight weapons check. Systems good. Weapons good. Up and up. Run in heading 350. Affirmative 350. Let's tighten the formation. Misery loves company. You got it. I'm all yours. Cross under it to left echelon, Munir. We're rolling to the right. 350. Where is your head? Okay, arm your weapons. Red for arm. Cadres in hot. Nachem's in hot. Red for in. Combat hours than anyone. I spoke to Colonel Elwardi about your request for transfer. And? He passed it along. He's expecting a decision. It's been his answer for months. Well, talk to him again yourself if you want. I'm afraid he might think I'm disloyal. I'm sure it's not the case. Lana, there's not that much to do. You can take the day off. Thank you, ma'am. It's a surprise to see you. Yes. You go to this church? Yes. Me too. I was just dropping something off on my way home. It's nice to see you. I was going to stop for tea. Would you join me? Oh, I'd like to, but the car's full of food. I don't want it to spoil. Well. Nice Ni to see you. Nice to see you, yes. 
Bye. Munir? Could you help me? It doesn't start. It's dead. Drink? That would be nice. Thank you. You have a nice house. Lila! Can you help me, please? Lila, where are you? I'm home. Uh-oh. Can you do me a favor and tell me what this says? Dear madam, family emergency must go home quick. Oh, great. It's the fifth family emergency this month. It's very quiet here. It's very peaceful. Would you like to see the garden? Very peaceful. Yes. I hope I'm not keeping you from something. No, no, no. My work's done for the day. Feels like it's getting cooler now. You know, I used to have goldfish in there, but they got eaten. I'm sure many animals would find them irresistible. Oh, no, not animals. My housekeeper, she fished them out one day and served them for supper. Oh. Did you eat them? No, she did. She couldn't understand why I was so upset. You're so American. Is that bad? Charming. It's nice to meet someone who doesn't hate me for being American. I mean, I'm not bombing Vietnam. No. You aren't responsible for that any more than I am for the decisions of my government. You're just two people, that's all. Except you're in the military. Yes. But even military men have feelings. Underneath this uniform is a human being. Are you unhappy in the service? I'm Iraqi. Since I was a boy, I wanted to be a pilot. Defend my country against its enemies. I love Iraq. I give my life in its defense. But. But what? Nothing. So how was your time in Russia? Russia? You trained there, didn't you? Didn't you tell me that? I did. I thought you did. Maybe it was Marcel. I like Russia. I like to travel. You like to be away from home. Do you have any girlfriends? <laughs> yes, one. What was she like? She was nice, but why are we talking about old girlfriends? I don't know. I find it interesting. Was she pretty? <laughs> well, I thought so. I liked her a lot. But I always suspected she was working for the KGB. <laughs> It's a big house. Don't you get lonely here? Yes. You have no children? No, why? I was just wondering. Perhaps if you had children, you wouldn't be so lonely. Perhaps. What are you thinking? I am... 
I was just looking at you. <laughs> and I'm afraid you caught me. I like the way you look at me. You have beautiful eyes. I could use another. How about you? Well, I really shouldn't. I probably shouldn't say this, but I've been thinking about you ever since the other night. Good morning, madam. Morning, madam. Mason, please come in.
I need to borrow an apartment from a friend. Then the government started putting pressure on the Christian minority. They nationalized my family's business. We had a beautiful home, almost a palace. They took it, turned it into a government building. It must have been hard. And broke my father. And for what? The revolution. Nothing has changed. People still go hungry. Except now we bomb them, too. Because they want their independence. Money. Oil. The Kurds are sitting on oil. They want their share of the proceeds. Also, there are low people. Solution, kill them. Like the Turks did with the Armenians, like you did with your Red Indians, like Hitler did with the Jews. You think the Jews are low people? No. Well, yes, for some of them. And do you like them? Not especially. I know what you mean, but they've suffered too. They have children, loved ones. They're human beings. It's wrong to discriminate against them. On the other hand, Zionism is another matter. How so? It's just an attempt by the Americans to take up where the British left off. It is? Of course. They have a vested interest in the Middle East. <laughs> You're so naive politically, Alan. Israel is an extension of American imperialism. We Arabs are one people, struggling for pride after centuries of domination. Israel's a thorn in our eye. But you're a Christian. Yes, I'm a Christian, but still an Arab. You'd like to see the end of Israel? No. No, let them be. I know what it is to be part of a persecuted minority. And I admire what they've achieved. But if we had the money that they have from the Americans, <laughs> who knows? The fact remains they're in our way. I mean, how would you like it if you couldn't drive from New York to uh, El Paso because Israel was in the way? I'd never want to. <laughs> oh, I don't want to talk about these things. I'm probably boring you. You never bore me. I want to know everything about you. I love listening to you. Well, hello. Oh, what were you doing in there? Charity stuff for the church, you know. Mm -hmm. Where are you headed? Oh, my dressmaker. Yeah. Listen, remember I told you about that guy in the Swedish trade fair? He called me. Do you like him? <laughs> Why right now? I, of course, I'd always love to join you anywhere, darling, but I don't know that it's possible yet. You've got to. It's a mistake to rush these things. I mean, I mean, what's the sudden urgency? I spoke to your father. They're worried about his health. I see. Well, in that, in that case, I'll have to go. I'll do what I can to get there. Good. That's the best thing, I guess. What are you thinking? That your husband will be back soon? I know. Munir? What? I've been thinking. What? How wonderful it would be if we could go away together. I mean, wouldn't it be great if we could go someplace where nobody knew us? I mean, where we could just walk down the street and, or go into a cafe instead of hiding all the time? Yes, it would be nice. Let's go to Rome. <sighs> Rome? Or Paris or wherever. I mean, I say Rome because I have business there. Besides, I can't face David yet. It would be great to be there together. What do you say? You can't be serious. Of course I am. I mean, it'll be wonderful. Say you'll do it, please. I love you. I love you, too. But if you think I can just drive to the airport and get on a plane to Rome, you're crazy. We wouldn't have to be gone that long if you're worried about your wife. Helen, Iraq is a prison camp. They're not going to let me fly to Rome. Who said anything about flying? 
certain friend of mine who shall remain nameless had a certain boyfriend in the Navy. Chantal. Don't expect me to gossip. Anyway, he got aboard one of those tankers that was picking up oil down at Basra. And cruised for six weeks before he got out of the Red Sea. No. A few hours after leaving Iraq, they put into Kuwait for food and water and stuff, and he got off. From Kuwait, you can fly anywhere in the world. Just think about it. It's crazy they'd shoot me. Oh, come on. Don't be so dramatic. You don't realize how dramatic these things are. You know, you Americans think you can walk through walls. I'm a prisoner here, do you understand? I'm sorry. You don't have to get mad. But I am. And I can't even discuss why I am, because you should know why I am. You know you worry me. I worry you? Yes, you do. You really do. You're so paranoid. And you're so stupid. Listen, uh, maybe you should go home and clean your house for when your husband returns. Helen. I'll think about it. I love you. I'll give your good wishes to my father. family was poor. I was lucky to start modeling when I was 15. Made a living. Good enough to get me out of New York. I took off when I was 18 and flew to Paris and wound up in Rome. I didn't like the people I met in Paris very much. Too many anti-American feelings. But I fell in love with an Italian painter and I fell in love with Rome. We used to live in this little house in the Rocco di Papa across the lake from Castel Gondolfo. It gets cold up there. And we used to sit around this wood stove in the kitchen. He had a wonderful record collection. And on sunny mornings, we'd sit on the porch with our hunks of bread and soft-boiled eggs and olive oil and thick coffee and listen to Vivaldi or whatever. I was happy for the first time in my life. It isn't often a person knows when they're happy. It always seems just beyond our reach. That's true. But I knew it then. I didn't realize how rare it was, though. I mean, how simple, how simple my life was when all I had to be was young and in love. What happened with your friend? 
didn't work out. The day I left Rome, I swore I'd kiss the ground if I ever returned. Oh, it's my favorite city in the world. It really is, and I've been to many. But there's something, there's something so special to me about Rome. That's why I'm so glad to be here with you. Oh, me too. I'm very happy to be here with you. My life has been... It's been lonely. I mean, an... An empty marriage, no children. And all of a sudden, you come into my life and... And happiness is so close and yet so out of reach. I'm sorry to be so serious. Life is serious. Tomorrow's our last day. We go back into the real world. It will be difficult. When I met you, when we first made love, I wanted you very much, but I never knew I'd fall in love. It brings me happiness and pain. I don't want to want you as much as I do, but I can't help it. Look, I know, my precious, I know. I love you, Helen, very much. <laughs> very much. Helen. Where are you going? You look ahead of damage. It's too beautiful to go back to reality. Reality is what you make it. What does that mean? It means you can change your life. I know. Be an airline pilot in America, fly for Pan Am. Helen, my darling, if only life were as simple as that. You deserve something better. For yourself, for your family. You don't believe in Iraq, you don't believe in your job. Did we come to Rome to talk about yes. this? I did. It was one reason. What's this? Airline tickets. <sighs> what crazy new idea you have now? Fly to America? Tel Aviv? I want you to fly to Israel with me. Israel? Are you crazy? What for? Just for one day. Not for one minute. It's the last place in the world I can go. And I have these. 
What are these? Two false passports. They just want to talk to you. Who? Who wants to talk to me? You only have to listen. It could give you a new life. Sharmuta, you fucking whore. I should have known. All those lies and I believed them. No, they weren't lies. I love you. Love? That word is shit coming from you. Look at these. These weren't just made. They took a long time. Yeah, like you, from the very beginning. Kill you. No! 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 You with your tears! Your sad and lonely life, how perfect! How wonderful! You never meant a word you said! Listen to me! Listen to me! I never meant to hurt you! Shut up! I never, never hated anyone as much as I hate you! No! I love you! Shut up! What are you going to do now? Go home. How? Bastards. to have this opportunity to speak with you. Explain our requirements, which are very straightforward. We want you to fly a MiG from Iraq to Israel. You have revealed a sympathy for persecuted minorities. You belong to a minority yourself. We believe you understand the importance of survival. This is why we need the MiG. Not to attack, but to defend ourselves against those who would drive us into the sea and under it. But to ask you to risk your life for a principle you don't share would be unrealistic. Hmm? We are offering you a home, a new life for yourself and your family in Israel. We can promise you safety as long as you stay within our borders. Also, although we're a small country, we are offering you enough money to live comfortably you think I would betray my country for money? Of course not. We know that you're a man of principle. Otherwise, Helen wouldn't have chosen you. But you will need money to re-establish yourself, to set up a new life, yes? And if I say no to your proposition? You can say no. We can't force you. But uh, perhaps your wife would be interested in this. Hmm? Or this could be placed in the wrong hands, yes? I understand. Well, then what is your answer? I'll think about it. I won't be pressured. Very well. Perhaps you'll go to your hotel now. Hmm? 
I would like to go home. I'm afraid the price you will have to pay for your safe return home is a make. I'm afraid you'll have to send me on first to get one, won't you? This is how you see the world. This is how we see it. What do you think? We have him. What choice does he have? You did very well. I'm sure it was not easy for you. Ellen Rosenthal, American citizen, born in New York, 1938. Came to Israel in 1959 with fiancé Paolo Serratone to work on Kibbutz Yad Mordechai. Serratone killed by Arab terrorists, May 7, 1961. Rosenthal recruited 1962. Placed in Iraq with false husband, September 1964. I should have known. Munir, I love you. All those lies, and I believe them. They weren't Just all lies, Munir. I do love you. It took a long time. You know, spies have feelings. Like you. Behaving yourself? Hello. And why is it school? Of course. Are you hungry? No, no, no. Come, look what I brought you. Hmm? How is your father? He's fine. <laughs> Here. This is for you. It must have cost a fortune. Before we start the briefing, I have a pleasant duty to perform. Colonel Jamal of the 23rd Artillery will be joining us as liaison officer. Colonel Jamal. Good morning. As you know, President Arif takes a personal interest in your development. As favored members of the state, you do not yes, be officer. reminded. Why not call him Army Spy and be done with it? And of your duties. When you have completed your training, you will be considered an elite fighting machine. What are you doing tonight? Staying home? We are meeting at 10. You have a nice time. These are serious people, Munir. Your name came up again. People were wondering if you wanted to be part of the change that's coming or not. Leave me out of this. I'm not with you, I'm not against you. The other day in Kirkuk, a man didn't want the army to search the room where his daughter-in-law was giving birth. They tied his hands to a jeep and they dragged him through the town. There are always things like this. In Abu Nawas, men are kept in septic tanks. ex -cremated. I don't want to hear this. Of course not. Okay. Good night. Look. I'm just trying to live. I hope you'll have that luxury.
Where's me what you were planning? Did Wasif al Rahman? Did Munir Redfa? I'm ashamed to say, General El Sadir Khader and two of our own pilots. What are you doing? Looking at you. Did you want to meet me so you could look at me? I'll do it. There's only one condition. I want my wife and my family out of the country first. I love her. Good. You understand, love. Why did you do it? Did they blackmail you into it? No. I accepted the assignment. How did a woman so beautiful get to be so cold-hearted? Watching someone you love get blown up helps. More sad stories? Your Italian painter, your one and only love, killed in the kibbutz and your heart turned to stone. I've heard it before. After Paolo, I was certain there was one way I could never be in danger. I was never, ever going to fall in love again. But it didn't. sighing and staring into space. I'm sorry, it's a tough time for me. Yeah, it must be difficult settling back into the humdrum after months of passion. I'm going to bed. Helen. Are you all right? Sure. Stay with me tonight. Take I'll make it. you feel better. I know, I just thought that. I'm sorry. Never mind. Helen. Nothing. This everything is all right. Remember, I love you. Farah. I have to talk to you. I've made a big decision that affects all of us. We're going to leave Iraq and start a new life. What are you talking about? What new life? I can't tell you the details. Wouldn't be wise. It's something I've thought about a lot. Anwar will be able to get the best medical attention. We'll have enough money to live. Are you in trouble? No. Farah, I love you. I want you and the kids with me always. What I'm doing, I'm doing for all of us. You have to believe me. You have to trust me. Daddy. Not sleeping? I'm scared of the giant. What giant? The giant walking down the roof. Oh. 
Our prince is coming. Good. Call the Air Force. We should meet with Tal and review details for his reception. And the family? Send them abroad for medical purposes. Redfa! Sir, I thought I would see you personally to explain the situation. You have applied for your wife and children to visit a specialist in London. I'm afraid that is not possible. You will understand that to send a child abroad for treatment suggests that our own doctors are not capable. But, sir, also... Also, there have been occasions in the past when those who have plotted against the state have sent their families out of the country first. You, Redfa, are, of course, above suspicion. But I wish to protect you from those uh, oversensitive people who might misinterpret your motives. I'm certain you understand. Of course, Colonel. I'm grateful for your foresight. When you're threatening to back out. The authorities have refused his family permission to go to London. The country is practically on a war footing. They're very sensitive. Very well. We'll have to go with another plan. It's more complicated, but we have no alternative. There are a number of spas in the foothills of Kurdistan. Rich Iraqis go there in the summer. It would be quite normal for Redfa's family to rent a cottage. Now, this is what they'll do. They'll travel by train to Arbil, and a car will meet them. But it won't take them to the cottage. They'll be driven to the monastery called Kara Da for a rendezvous with the Kurdish separatists. We'll take them higher into the mountains, up toward the Shinhan Pass, where a helicopter will fly them across the border. It's much more difficult to coordinate. Munir wanted his family out of the country before he moved. You'll have to explain to him it's impossible now. He'll have to leave at the same time as his family. The evening before he takes off, David and you will leave on a European holiday. You won't come back. <laughs> Where are you going? Exile. They are deporting us forever. You shouldn't talk to me. Hey, we've been like brothers. Can it hurt for us to say goodbye? We shall never see each other again. I'll be back. I'm not finished here. Ran, your wife and children will be flown to meet you in Tel Aviv. Are you all right? Yes. Repeat your flight plan. I take off and fly northwest towards Syria. I transmit a decoy message on the frequency used by the Syrians, but break southwest to pick up the Air Jordan Baghdad Amman flight west of Ar Ramadi. I fly directly beneath it at 10,000 feet to avoid radar detection and cross the border into Jordan. East of Amman, I break again to fly at ground level toward the Negev. I will be met over the Dead Sea and escorted to base. Transmit your call sign when you're within radio range of Israel. Then they'll know you're on your way. There's only one problem with all this. All flights are now being made on half tanks. With all the zigzagging, I need at least full tanks to get to Israel. What will you do? Get full tanks. Munir? You want to hear the flight plan again? I take off. I fly northwest. I... I transmit... Do you, do you still hate me?
your head for? Yes? We know, Retva. We know all about it. You have behaved with incredible stupidity. Your sordid adultery with this American woman is beneath contempt. Such conduct by an Iraqi officer merits the severest penalty. However, we are prepared to consider leniency. The woman's husband, David, the oil company executive, we believe is an American spy. You will use your relationship with her to find out about him and report to us. How we deal with you will depend on what you bring us. Do you understand? Yes. It's so hard to know what to take. Take enough vacation things to make it look real. But fill only one suitcase with what is most vital. I'm terrified. You must do exactly what I told you. To the last detail. Don't deviate. Timing is everything. Do you understand? Yes. I have to go now. Girl, I wish they would make up their minds. What do you mean? Haven't you seen? We're having the honor of being addressed by Salim. Salim! Unity, freedom, and socialism, the way ahead for Islam. All training flights tomorrow have been put back for three hours. Hello. I need to speak with Helen. That was Redford, the damn fool. What the hell does he think he's doing calling here? He must be in trouble. Why did you hang up? Why did I hang up? Because half Iraq is listening. Helen? Don't... Hello? Hello? Yes? Helen, we must delay. Things have changed at the base. No, that's impossible. You've got to take your holiday as planned. What about my family? You've got to stop them. Yeah, I'll take care of your family. I promise. I'm going to the station. I'll meet you at the airport. We're not going anywhere. You're not risking our lives. He's risking his life for us. We have an agreement to honor. A bullshit! I'm going Helen. to the station. Take my bags. I'll meet you at the gate. Don't stop me. You're not thinking straight. Get out of my way, I David! I don't want to hurt you, Helen. God damn you!
हेलो you are and I know where you're going there's been a change in plans Munir's flight is delayed you can't go to Carada they're watching you you're gonna have to trust me Farah I'm a friend of Munir you can't. you I'm sorry I got on late I didn't have time to get one you have committed very serious offense under no circumstances take care of it I will issue your ticket letter. You're American. Yes. We're near Kren in America. I know. How do you know Munir? Through business. What business? This business. We met at a party. What party? Listen, there's a lot of things I can't tell you. Like what? I can't tell you. Why not? Stop before our bill. I'm not good in home. Yes, you are. You have to. You're being watched. If you go to Caradal, they'll arrest Munir. They'll arrest you, the children. Just take what you need. I'll help you, I promise. You're my child. Do you have a telephone? 
No, out of order. Is there another one in town? Town? <laughs> yeah, I want to rent a car. A car? What are you doing here? I got off the train by mistake. Mm, or like big mistake. <laughs> Excuse me, huh? Excuse me. Marhaba. Ah, marhaba. Excuse me. What? Huh? Excuse me. What are you doing? Abu Farid. Abu Farid. Full tanks and auxiliary tanks fitted. Ready for takeoff in 30 minutes. Excuse me, sir, but we have firm instructions. Only half tanks. I'm flying a special mission. Sir, sir. Excuse me again, but I must see your authorization. Maximum operational range test. It is signed by Colonel Jamal himself. Hmm. But I'm surprised you haven't realized. What is that? What the test is for. What target is 600 miles west of here? Israel. We are getting ready to attack Israel. 30 minutes, both tanks. Ready. You are beautiful. You are beautiful. Yes, but you are blonde. You have blue eyes. You are American woman. He loves you, Farah. I don't need you to tell me my husband loves me. I hope you're enjoying your breakfast. Where are those fuel tanks going? I will look into it. to fly a long-range test.
fight. Fix it. Так она вас слушает. Товарищ Бухарин, срочно, Азиз. Старый генджент. شو بتسوي هون؟ قل لي شو اسمك؟
gotta die. We're here. Iraqi soldiers. When should we be in radio range? Approximately five or ten minutes. When you hear the call sign Skyman, you will know he's on the way. Any news of his family? Nothing.
I'll take him. Go, he's mine. Take him. I hit him. Unidentified aircraft approaching from the southeast. Aircraft? Coming from that direction? No. We can't take any chances. It could be a sneak attack. I agree. Scramble all planes. If intruders enter our airspace, engage and destroy. Repeat, engage and destroy. Dead Sea. We are over Israeli airspace. Return to base. Don't you, you must. 
si ne ti rinnovi! Where is my family? They are safe. Welcome to Israel. <laughs> Mounting here in Jerusalem, as they anxiously await the highlight of this celebration of their victory in the Six-Day War, the flyover by the IAF, the Israeli Air Force. I didn't think you were coming. Coffee, please. Not champagne? Shouldn't we drink for your victory? Victory. For some, yes. How are you, Helen? Are you happy? Doesn't seem to be within my reach. Are you? Within your reach? Yes, yes. No, are you happy? We have a nice apartment. From the kitchen window, you can see the Mediterranean. Also, a nice view of a construction site. My family's fine. You're alive, thanks to you. No one knows who we are, of course, which is a strange way to live. I know. Yes, I suppose you do. Munir Redfar is alive on the radio, the television, the newspapers. He's a hero to some, a traitor to most. No one knows it's me. Like you, I've become a mystery. It's funny, isn't it? Now I can begin to understand you. So, what will you do now? Go to the States. Yeah. And after that? Who knows? I'll never forget you. Never. 